Welcome or welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be taking a stroll down memory lane and going through my application from when I applied to dental school back in 2018. I'm Connor and I'm a dental student at Roseman University's College of Dental Medicine. And I thought that maybe this video might be helpful just so you could get an idea of my stats when I applied to dental school so that you could see where you're at in comparison to give you an idea of whether or not you may or may not get accepted. Obviously take that with a grain of salt because everyone's application is different and everyone has different circumstances. So just because your stats might be similar or better to mine doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have a better or worse chance. Also, if you might get upset seeing that I was a worse applicant than you are or were, I guess consider this your trigger warning because that might make you mad. Um, but with that, let's jump into it. So future Kanye here, and the reason I'm here is because I wasn't really sure what I wanted this video to be like, if it would be helpful to just have a video of me saying, here's my dad scores, Here's my shadowing hours, my volunteer hours, and then a couple other things. Or if I should take up the whole 20 whatever minutes this video is and go through and show you my application. Um, so you're getting the long version. If you want to just see my stats, you can skip to whatever timestamp is here. If you decide to watch the whole thing, I hope it's helpful for you. And with that, back to the regular programming. As far as total hours go, for shadowing, I had 121 hours. Most of it was actually with a pediatric dentist. Although I would say, make sure you look at if schools have certain requirements with shadowing as far as number of different offices they need you to shadow at or a specific number of hours with a general dentist so you make sure you're meeting the shadowing requirements otherwise you might be wasting money applying to a school that you don't meet the requirements for for my volunteer hours i had 1778 hours which i know sounds like a ton but a lot of that came from my two-year mission so i had what like 170 ish hours from from other extracurricular activities so that should give you a more accurate estimate where you may or may not be at. As far as my employment hours, it was 2,990. That may or may not apply to you. You might not be working through college, so don't be too concerned about employment. So the first section of the application is personal information. So things like where you were born, uh, your parents' level of education, and the financial status of your family as you were growing up. Other questions in this first section are things about your race and ethnicity, as well as your military service, if that applies to you. There are also questions which I will include in this screen recording. So you have questions about uh, student conduct violations, academic performance, so whether you've been on ac academic probation or suspended or things like that. Uh, if you've ever committed a felony, if you have, just be honest, they're going to run a background check and they'll find out then. So just be upfront about it if you have committed a felony. Um, if you've had any certification, registration, license, or clinical privileges revoked, suspended, or in any way restricted, again, just be honest. It will be far better to be upfront about that and let them know rather than trying to hide something. And then if you've ever been convicted of a misdemeanor. The second section is your uh, academic history. So this will include information about your high school. This will be your DAT score. So you can see here, my academic average was a 22, PAT was a 22, QR 20, reading comprehension 25, biology 18, and Gen Chem 24, OCHEM 25, Total Science 21. And then these are just simple questions and pretty straightforward information about the universities you've attended. I've attended three different universities technically, so I had some concurrent enrollment credit, which you can see here. This was a high school class that I got college credit for, and then I did a year at a community college 
And then you also have all of my courses that I took for my undergraduate degree. You go through, you put in all of your grades, the class name, the field or the subject, um, the number of credits, your grade. This does include classes that you may or may not have withdrawn from. So I withdrew from two classes, so yes, you can get into dental school even if you've withdrawn from classes. And then you will also include planned and in progress classes. So obviously I had not completed my degree when I applied to dental school, and so you just have to have a plan for completing the prerequisites as well as the classes for your degree so that they can see that you are going to meet the requirements by the time you matriculate. For all of this coursework, there is, or at least there was, a fee that you could pay and have, I think it was a DIA, input all of your coursework information. I think it was like a hundred dollars or it was kind of expensive from what I remember. And I would say, save yourself the money, do it yourself and just double check your work. Moving on, the often asked question about GPA, which GPA matters? Do they care about BCP? Do they care about overall science? Do they care about with plus and minus or without? They calculate so many different GPAs. They calculate, as you can see, just biology classes, just chemistry classes, just physics classes, BCP, science, non-science, behavioral science. I mean, any possible GPA that they want, they will calculate and figure out. So don't be too concerned about whether or not they're going to see or emphasize one GPA. My GPA, you can see here, my total undergraduate was a 3.46. My science GPA with plus and minus was a 3.09. My BCP was a 3.17. I don't know what else to say about GPA, but they calculate a bunch and they'll figure out and see what they wanna see. Moving on, you have the different experiences that you have participated in or had throughout your college career. This includes shadowing, other volunteer work, this includes employment, research, all of that will go into these experiences. My tip for the experiences section is to treat each box like a mini personal statement. So rather than just saying, I shadowed X doctor and saw these procedures, or I volunteered doing this, go ahead and share what that experience taught you either about the field of dentistry or what that helped you learn and how that will make you a better dentist and what it will help you to contribute to the field and to the profession. If you have some sort of statistics or hard facts that you can say, I improved this metric by X amount, I would include those if at all possible. That's something that I could have done a better job at in my application, but it is what it is. This shadowing experience that I have here is when I watched my wife get her wisdom teeth taken out. So you can see that was only two hours. The next one listed, I shadowed an orthodontist and I talked about how he shared some things with me that made me realize I didn't necessarily want to pursue orthodontics. This is who I did the majority of my shadowing with. So total of 70 hours. Honestly, just make sure that the total hours are correct and the number of weeks are correct as well. And then that I think automatically calculates the hours per week if I remember correctly. So I talked about how I watched this pediatric dentist perform different procedures, especially undoing tongue and lip ties with a laser, which I thought was really cool. And just his patience with the patients being kids, helping them overcome their fears and anxieties about being at the dentist. This is the general dentist I did the rest of my shadowing with, as you can see, 45 hours. 
discussing how he focused on educating his patients and how I was impressed with that and how that's something that I want to be sure and do as a practicing dentist in my career. Working as a volunteer assistant, so this was on a humanitarian trip that I had the opportunity to go on. You don't have to have these humanitarian trips. Sometimes things can get a little sketchy depending on what you say about it. If you extracted teeth or did something like that that you shouldn't have, that can land you in some hot water. But if you just talk about how you assisted or things like that, that is fine. So for this experience, I talked about how I learned how physically demanding dentistry can be. And even though it is a physically demanding job, that wasn't deterring me from pursuing it as a career. Uh, this was a volunteer experience that I talked about. So I served in the ASDA chapter for my undergraduate school and just talked about my responsibilities doing that. <clears throat> this was some leadership opportunities that I had. So this was a ton of hours that I got. I did a two-year mission for my church, and so I roughly estimated the number of hours I spent specifically focusing on the leadership capacities that I had, and it added up to 1,600 hours over those two years. This was one of my jobs that I held, so I talked about the number of classes that I was responsible for helping record and making sure that they got posted for the students. I also talked about how it was required of me to be calm because when there are technical difficulties and a professor is trying to get their class going, you have to be calm with them, with yourself, with the students. So I talked about that as well. Um, another employment opportunity where I was in a teaching role. So there's that one. Another employment, just talking about this job where I actually included this in my manual dexterity as well because it was hands-on physical labor. We did lots of things with our hands and so I just put that in my manual dexterity section as well as talking about it here. Here is some volunteer information just through my church that I discuss and how it taught me about being aware of the needs of the people in my community and how being aware of things that are going on in my community, whatever that is, when I'm a dentist is something that's important to me because I want to be someone who is a good citizen of that community, who is involved and doing good for those around me. Here I talked about a volunteer dental clinic that I volunteered at. It's where dentists come in and volunteer their time and lots of pre-dental students volunteer their time to provide treatment and care to people who can't afford it. So to pay for their dental care that they receive, they actually perform community service. And so it was a really cool organization that I was able to get involved in. You can try and see if you have something similar in your area, but if you do, I would highly recommend getting involved. It's a really great experience. And this is something that I would like to do throughout my career in some sort of capacity. A lot of people ask questions about whether or not they should do this for volunteering or that. And I would answer that question by saying, participate in activities that you are passionate about. For me, I volunteered as a youth soccer coach, as you can see here and I absolutely loved it. It was so fun to be involved in soccer in that capacity and to pass on the things that I learned growing up playing soccer onto some younger kids. In comparison, I have absolutely zero hours of research because there wasn't ever a research project that was interesting enough for me to want to be participating in. I would kind of take that approach to these activities and extracurriculars that you're participating in just because it will help you, one, do it for a longer period of time because they like to see longevity in these activities, and two, writing about it and then talking about it in your interview will just make it that much more interesting and exciting to hear about. And there is a section for awards, so I am an Eagle Scout, so I wrote about that. This is my personal statement. If you would like to see a separate video of me reading through my personal statement, I kind of dread doing this because looking back, I don't totally love it, but it is what it is. This is where your 
different letters of recommendation would be. My university, we had a packet using Interfolio, I think is what it's called. And so this was just the contact information for that. Yeah, then you have some release statements. If you've previously or are currently applying to other professions other than dental school, so if you're trying to apply to medical school and dental school, they will find out about that. If your education has ever been interrupted for something, so like I said, I did a two-year mission for my church, and so I talked about how I was not enrolled in school during that time. I am not a member of the military, so I have no military experience to discuss. I have not previously applied. And something that I've seen people ask about is if you sign in or sign up for AdSAS just to check out the application, and then later on when you go to actually apply, it says that you're a reapplicant. You are not a reapplicant. As long as you have never submitted applications to a program, you are not a reapplicant. So hopefully that clears that up for some of you. And then you talk about your manual dexterity. So I talked about how I took a pre-dental class where we did wax ups and tooth carvings. I also talked about my job doing maintenance in office buildings, working with my hands in that capacity. And I picked up guitar a little bit, so I discussed that as well. So instruments, uh, any fine motor skills, so like sewing, uh, painting, I mean really you can talk about anything for manual dexterity. There are some more questions about the high school that you went to and just the status of students that went there. Uh, it's okay if you don't know, I didn't know some of this stuff. Then you have the opportunity to talk about relatives in the field of dentistry. So my dad was a lab technician and was involved in a number of different labs. I have a brother who's a dentist, I have a cousin who's a dentist, and another cousin who is a dental hygienist. So I included all of them in my application. I don't know if you necessarily have to go as far out as I did with cousins, but I figured it wouldn't hurt. And then there's a section that just breaks down if you've taken or are planning to take the prerequisites that are required for that program. Nothing super crazy here. And that is it. That was my application. So I hope that this was valuable to give you some insight as far as what I was like as an applicant, kind of my stats and where I stood. And if you appreciate this and it's helpful to you, go ahead and like it. And let me know in the comments down below what you would like to see, whether it's a question you have about the application or interviews, just let me know what questions you have and I will look into making content to meet those needs because really this channel is about providing value to you and helping at least one, if not more, people get into dental school and pursue their dream career. Till next time, see ya.